video, we worked at or looked at the four breakdowns or the four steps uh, to uh, layout. We looked at right hand and then we briefly looked upon at the left. So the footwork is key, feeling comfortable is key, rhythm is key. The perfect layout is when the ball goes from the backboard to the mesh and touches nothing else. We say that is glass to mesh, that is the best layout. How do we get uh, glass to mesh, mesh finishes more often? And how do we prevent jamming the basketball, so missing short, and how do we prevent from missing long because we went too high or too hard. So we use the high and soft method. <clears throat> Eventually you won't really have to think about it, but as you're developing as a younger player, using these little tricks will help you progress further and faster, all right? So when I'm finishing layups, especially in training, not necessarily in the game, but especially when I'm training and working, is I am getting my eyes up high over the glass. I'm not looking at the rim. Unless I'm dunking it, I'm not looking at the rim when I'm doing a layup, all right? I'm looking at the, the box or the part, of the, the, the part of the backboard that I need to hit. And that's gonna be different based on what's in front of me, how fast I'm coming in, and what angle I'm coming in with. But typically, we wanna get up on the white box. If we can hit the white box, we're high on the glass, we're not going to jam it. Now the second part is hit that box softly. And if we go high and soft, that ball should go glass to mesh more times than not. And that's what you want. You want to be a consistent finisher around the rim. We're going to add in some new skills today called hand education and spin. And we'll give you a drill to work on that. In fact, we'll give you two drills. Okay? So high and soft is still very much at play today. See our target, hit it softly. Now we're going to be doing some stuff with our hands and getting the ball to spin. And we're actually going to start to be able to use more of that backboard after today's lesson. So hand education, they used to call it English. All right? But it's just spin on the ball off the glass. Uh, so here, again, I'm a right-handed shooter, so I'm going to talk about right-handed. If you're a lefty, mirror image this, all right? So I'm going to go index finger on the needle hole of the ball, all right? I'm going to load in my shooting, or my guide hand, palm spread, across kind of the side of the ball, the front of the ball, and the top of the ball, all at the same time. So it's kind of like here, all right? From there, I'm going to have it around my, my, my load position. I'm gonna see my target and I'm gonna extend up. And as I do that, I'm going to turn my wrist and I'm gonna add spin to the ball. I'm actually gonna use the spin to move the ball sideways into the rim. So in the last video, we had you on this 45 degree angle where if I shot it straight, it would go into that box and into the rim. This time, we're gonna be parallel to the glass, all right? So I'm no longer gonna be on this angle, I'm now parallel. And if I shoot straight, the ball's gonna come back to me. So I'm gonna use some hand education, a rotation in, and you'll see the result here. Same idea, we're gonna go over to the left side now. I'm gonna put my index finger on the needle hole of the ball. Guide hand's coming in, that ball's coming right up through, that index finger's coming through my nose, and then I'm rolling my hand in. Now, which direction? Does it make a difference? It absolutely does. So when we're facing the glass, so when we are chest to glass, and we're up into this shooting position, what we need to do is rotate our thumb into the rim. So we're in this position, we rotate in. 
and the ball is going to spin in. If we rotate pinkies out, the ball is actually going to spin it away from that rim. So it's when you're chest to glass, it's thumb to rim. Again, check out the result. So once you're comfortable with the high and soft finish and adding a little bit of spin, now not too much, but a little bit, we have a really good drill called the Mikan drill. It's named after George Mikan, famous player, uh, very tall, post player, great around the rim. So uh, we're gonna work on that. It is a drill where you go from right side to left side, back and forth. Usually you go for about eight to 10 makes. So four on each side or five on each side. Or you can do this time for 30 seconds or a minute and you try to beat your score. Every time you make a layup, it counts as one point. The goal here is to make them in a row, rhythmic, smooth. If you miss, you've got to make it before you get to go to the next side of the drill. So you can't just miss and go side to side. You've got to make it and then you get to go to the next side. All right, so you're looking for points, how many can you make, and you're looking for some smooth rhythm for this, all right? So that means the more you make in a row, the smoother your rhythm. We're gonna connect these layups with what's called a cross step. So if I'm in this position that I was just in, we just show, showed that, as that ball is coming through the mesh, I'm gonna time it out. So I'm gonna make that, as that's coming, I reach up for it, I keep my hips low, my outside foot, this foot here, is going to cross and plant. As that happens, I look up, I see my white box, and then I plant this foot down. As soon as that foot plants, I'm up, I catch, plant. Up, oh, I missed, I gotta make it. threat at the basket when you're facing it, so chest to glass, you can see your target, and if you need a little extra spin, you can get your thumb spinning in towards the, the rim, have it spin across your forehead, and you'll be able to use more parts of the backboard, but play around with it. If you're back to the backboard, we can also do what's called a reverse mic in or a reverse finish. So as I'm coming in, I can flip it up and reverse it and hopefully make one. But to do that, I'm gonna use hand education. I'm gonna use a lot of spin. I'm gonna use my same target, the white square. And I'm gonna use that same starting position of index finger on the needle hole. I'm gonna be down here. Now, if you don't have blocks and lines to help you, what we do is we stand right underneath the rim not the backboard, but the rim, the cylinder, and you're gonna take one, maybe two steps out, depending on how big you are. Two steps if you're little, all right? Or smaller. And you wanna see the backboard, all right? If we're behind it, it's pretty hard for me to do my layup. So I gotta be out in front. I get down low. I'm gonna look just over my shoulder. My shoulders are square. Okay, to the camera, but my, my head is going to look up and see my target. Similar shooting position, index finger on the ball, we're very low, my shoulders are square to the camera, but I'm looking over my shoulder to the, to the glass. From here, I bring the ball up through my nose, I pick my nose, and I'm going to bring my elbow and pinky finger up to that corner of the glass. So I'm here, I shoot back up, and, and it's this snapping, this rotation of the elbow and pinky, and it's gonna let the ball and glass do a lot of the work for me. All 
All right? If I go over to the left side, same idea, left hand, make sure that I'm in front of the backboard, I can see my target, I'm left hand, index finger on the needle hole, I look over my shoulder, I'm not twisting. If you twist, that spin's gonna make it incorrect. So I gotta stay back to the backboard, look over, snap, high and soft. When you've mastered that, we can do that same mic and drill side to side. All right? Cross step is going to link the two moves, crossing over, cross step. All right? Head is up, hips are low. Cross step, plan. Cross step, plan. Oh, I missed. Gotta make it before I can move. I got it. 